Give me a brain straight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's only Monday. It's only Monday. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer on a Monday. Um, right. Okay, I'm sitting here, well, probably after this video having a coffee with, but at the moment sitting here with um, Councillor Rob Pascoe, and there's been a couple of interesting developments over the last, oh, well, over the weekend of hit social media and, and this sort of thing, um, and that's what we're going to be talking about is mostly to do with councillors giving themselves access to childcare funding, effectively, um, and we need to be fair and um, look at why it is in concept a, a a beneficial thing but it's how it was gone about and to be honest I must admit with what councillors get when you guys get paid um, if you can't afford childcare or budget childcare into that um, while everyone else on incomes half your size actually have to I think that's a bit poor yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway we're mainly here to get your view on this okay. <laughs> um, I'm hoping, I was hoping to get the Mayor's view at some point but we'll see about that um, but your view on this whole issue and, and why you have those views. Great. Thanks, Lance, and thanks for having me back on again. It's good to be sitting on Victoria Street on a beautifully sunny autumn day. Uh, look, uh, look, I share some of the concerns that you've already raised. One of the three words on the, the door of the council chamber that yeah. we pass each time we go in there is selflessness. Yes. And selflessness to me means concern more for the needs and wishes of others than one's own. Yeah. And look, Thursday, the debate on Thursday was all about self-interest. You know, the six thousand dollars is not a significant amount of, of spending, but it is another cost for the ratepayer to, to bear. Yeah. And that's at a time when we're asking ratepayers for another nine percent rate increase because we can't manage our day-to-day -day spending. So, so we did this three years ago. We came and asked you for some money. We've come back. We come back again, and yet we continue to spend. And look, this spend kind of annoys me because it's all about ourselves. It's about yeah. us wanting to spend or create a, a beneficial uh, perk for councillors only. Now, you mentioned about need. Certainly, with um, uh, councillors on between. Ninety to a hundred thousand dollars, and then the mayor, deputy mayor, and mayor receive more than that. Um, is there a need for this six thousand dollar payment? And I'd have to say no, there is not a need. I know what it's like to manage a household with young children. I'm not doing it now, but I certainly did in my earlier years, and on one income. Um, so look, there was and if, no. And if you if you if you weren't council, you'd probably be your own kids' daycare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, so the need was the need is not there. Secondly, we don't offer benefits of this type to our staff, and 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 you know we sometimes require our staff to stay back late for meetings. We make them sit there and wait until we're ready to hear them present their reports, and um, and that doesn't matter whether that's at five thirty or seven o'clock at night or whatever. And many of our professional staff on council who come and give us reports have got young children and yeah. they are also having to manage their daycare and we ask them to do all of these things without offering them a similar kind of a payment. So it is it is selfish in the sense that we're looking after ourselves ahead of, ahead of the others. Um, and the next step along the line is that typically uh, daycare is is reimbursed and there's some tax incentives uh, to uh, a proper, um, or not so proper, uh, registered educational centre like yeah. a like a kindergarten, like a, like pause, like some of the other groups that operate in the marketplace, and that is evidenced by a receipt that you okay. get in order to make a claim back. In this case, star, uh, the councillors who advocated for this are looking for their own family members to look after their children. Yeah. That, was whether, the, that was the other thing. Whether, got. whether it, yeah, whether it's mum, uh, spouse, or partner, or whether it's mother-in-law or whoever, and perhaps I don't know how they would prove the hours. It might be just by way of a notebook, 
but here you're asking council to re uh, out of the out of the out of public money you're asking them to reimburse on the basis of a logbook which says I looked after Joey as 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 his dad for two hours while my wife was at a council meeting yeah. right? or, or 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 at a civic meeting somewhere. Yeah. And if it's if it's the if it's the councillor's spouse well, my view is that's that spouse's duty anyway. Yes. Yep, um, yep. Many of many people get their grandparents to look after the after the kids from time to time. Most, and we do that for our for yeah. our for our <laughs> children. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you do it you do it without wanting to say, oh, here I'll give you my hours and I want yeah. you to go back and claim it back off your employer. It's more, Dad. Do you have a council meeting on? No, good. You're looking after the kids. <laughs> um, but and it it is an issue. Because I don't think of, I don't know of any other industry off the top of my head where the business will pay a person's, a, a, an employee's family to look after the kids. Yeah, yeah. Even if, even for industries that do provide some sort of childcare um, compensation, etc. Um, but yeah, and, and and the fact that so there's a number of levels to it. There's the the fact that they put it forward and voted for it for themselves, um, that it's basically for effectively paying families to look after their, their, their own kids. It, w- it isn't currently, but it could but become it could that, right? become yeah. that, yeah. Yep. Um, and the fact that, and this is the bit that got me, is it's not available to any council workers. And I don't just mean the ones that directly have connection with the councillors, but I mean, any, yeah. what about yeah, those anyone. people on... Um, Forty to sixty thousand dollar incomes um, that struggle to work, you know, two parents working, etc., yep, etc., yep, yep. solo parent working, and they've got the same situation. Um, yeah, um, I, I think that uh, the the remuneration authority who approved the earlier one did so on the basis that there are a number of small councils around the country yeah. where the honorarium is. Twenty to thirty thousand yeah. a year, and so in those instances, you could justify potentially a need for some sort of support yeah. to encourage younger people, and particularly mothers, to put themselves yeah. up for council. But in Hamilton, there is clearly no need yeah. because of the current levels of honorarium. Now, my my mother did okay um, when when we were kids when she got onto council back home in a small town. They were one of those smaller places. Um, Mum did okay. Yes, we were a little bit older, but um, still, I think the um, they could have done it on the basis of if the honorarium for the, for the council is under a certain amount, yes. then this applies. Because they do that with the the range of your of your remuneration, isn't it? It's it's related to the size of the council. Yeah, it is size of the city, size, size of, of the city, size of the territorial yeah. authority. Yeah. So population size. You could easily put a condition on something like that. Because I know one of the biggest arguments I've seen in social media is, oh, it's a way to get more, in particular, young women involved in yeah, council. Yeah, and look, I, I think that's a fantastic Fine. idea, personally. I but that, that's a great that idea argument then. doesn't apply to, what, Hamilton, uh, Tauranga, Wellington, Auckland, Christchurch, councils like that that are bigger. Yep. But I could see it could apply to... Whatever they call the Tech Woody Council at the moment, it's an amalgamated one, isn't it? It's yeah, there's Ruapahu, Ruapahu District Council, yeah, Waitomo. All those little yeah, Waitomo the little, small little ones. Yeah, councils around the yeah, country. Yeah, it would apply that. And it would have been very easy to put a um, cap on the yeah, remuneration. Le- yeah. oh, okay, if your remuneration is under 60,000, sweet, exactly, or whatever. Exactly. You know? and, and the other thing that I think as, as elected leaders, we need to be wary of is that we're not spending our money, we're spending public money. Yes. You know, when I was an employer, I was in an accounting firm where we employed in New Zealand 1,700 people. So yeah. we could set our own rules as to what benefits yeah. we gave staff because it came out of our pocket yeah. rather than out of the public purse. Yeah. And, and, and we have to be quite different in our role as councillors because we're spending public money, we're spending ratepayers' money, rate, rates are, are a tax, and so we're levying, we levy a tax, yeah. and so we're spending that money. So we have to be even more responsible about how well and how carefully we spend that money. Do you think it would be a good guideline for council to 
um, when it comes to issues like this to look at would the majority of the people paying the rates be happy with this? Because I think, I'm looking at social media and, and watching the debate over this, there's a lot of people who are annoyed, to, to say the least, um, and they've thrown up things like, there are people that are struggling to pay their rates because they're on fixed incomes, low incomes, who are struggling to pay their rates, um, and they have to be very careful about their spending to be able to pay their rates each year, including the rates rises and things like this, who are not happy with this to say the least, because it's fine for someone who who doesn't have to give a second thought about the, about the rates. If, you, if, you do, if you're in an in a income bracket where you don't have to really worry about it, yep, yep. Um, it's fine. But if you're on a fixed income, yep. and we're getting more of a fixed income household now as, as yep, people yep. age... And, and when you look at the profile of those people, because I'm, I'm in that age yeah. group now, the profile of those people, they typically have their home yeah. as their major asset. And if they're lucky, they've saved some money during their their yeah. uh, working life, which they've got invested. Some of them won't have a lot, um, and they've got the, the national superannuation. Yeah. So often they haven't got a lot of you know. So as interest rates drop, as they have, yeah. um, their income has actually dropped, even though it's fixed. And yet their most valuable asset that they've got might be in Hamilton, a seven or eight hundred thousand dollar house, which. Uh, I hope people remember this when the next election comes round because um, it's one of those things that, um, as you said, if the council needs to think about whether this is a good way to spend taxpayer ratepayer money, and so hopefully people remember this the next next election and like go well, can the person I vote in? be trusted to spend council money wisely or my rates wisely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look, and look, that's mind. happening next October. Yeah. Next October is the next uh, uh, oh, next council too. election. And um, and uh, so we have to keep our memories yes. wise yeah. between now and October. And it's a question of how well social media, because I, I don't put a lot of confidence at times in our media yeah. to pick us up on things that might not have been uh, popular uh, during the term, but how, how good social media will be to remind us of some of the bad decisions that yeah. councillors may have made during the term. And of course, you know, I'll be bringing, bringing these things up again come election time. Well, I, I, hope, I hope you do, Lance. I hope you do. Because it's my, my thing is I will bring, bring yeah. these issues up because I think it's important that we don't forget we as as a population as as ordinary rate payers we need to have a, a, at least a three year me, three to four year memory when it comes to an election now that's that's that can be a good thing and a bad thing because we need to also recognize the the good contributions councillors have done and keeping an eye on these things and and watching out for us yep, yep. as well as the bad as, as well as the bad decision yeah. and look um that's that's the only tool that that uh, that that residents have is yeah. a chance to vote you out if you've yeah. done something wrong or keep you in if they think you're doing a good yeah. job. And that's, that's uh, and so it's a matter of somehow collating all the good and bad things you've done and then deciding whether you think that councillor justifies uh, or, or or is is suitable for yet another yeah. tool. And that's one of the things that crops up with the things to do with transport alternatives as they call it yeah. to me it's stuff to do with cycling but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because there's so many car drivers um, in Hamilton when they start making decisions about how they're going to reshape roads to account for cyclists etc etc there is the fear that come next election we've got quite a bike positive council at the moment yep. come next election if enough people are ticked off with how it went, we may end up with an anti-bike <laughs> yeah, <laughs> weighted yeah, council yeah. and it'll yo-yo backwards and forwards and the, the progress goes forward, then stalls or goes backwards and then goes forward. Yeah. That, that's democracy and politics. Yeah, um, and, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but that's where I think and that's one of the things we've got to deal with um, when it comes to how democracy works is we need to think long term and this issue, particularly with the child getting, is one of those ones also that we need to think long term for Hamilton um, and really 
is this idea a good one? I personally don't think so, um, because it's not needed for us. I can see how it could be for smaller councils, and there's a way to way to deal with that so that it's focused on the smaller councils, because I I would like to see more um, young mothers, etc., getting into council in smaller townships and stuff like that. And your mum would be a good case in point, where yeah. it might have been beneficial if she'd had to... Uh, attend a late council meeting and there was no one to look after you yeah, and we just found siblings. out in the morning where we were supposed yeah, yeah. to go after school so, <laughs> because because yep. part of it was like early on it was it was after school stuff so um yeah so we we it was it was handled but then uh, part of that was mum and dad knew so many people and yeah and small towns often often interact differently than big cities do yeah. so I understand that but but at least the opportunity it was there yeah. that if your mum had got stuck she could have called in a, a provider yeah. and said can you look after my children yeah. for three hours after school or something yeah. so I can complete my civic duty work that I have to do yeah and, and we, we sort of got used to not seeing a lot of mum at different times you know she'd with the, you, you wouldn't think a small council would would keep the council so busy, but yeah, yeah. no, well, no, the, the meeting structures in those small councils must be as as much as they are in a big yeah, council. Yeah. We just have different delegations in a big council, so so some things don't get there because yeah. because they fall under under a delegation level. But yeah. but look, and look, you cover a bigger area as well. Yeah, um, and and you you've still got an exec a CEO, and you've still got that senior management yeah. team on council, and you still have to do all the same things that a big council has to do. Yeah. Uh, um, so, yeah, look, I, um, I I think the intent of the remunera- remuneration authority was right in terms of uh, making the opportunity available. It's just that but maybe I, they didn't but quite I think, think it out? Well, I think we've, we've kind of jumped in on it. Yeah. And we've got some uh, self-interested, some yeah. self-serving councillors who saw an opportunity to add another six grand. Yeah. And that's the way I saw the debate develop. And as the debate developed, I saw some other councillors who sort of thought, oh, I might be entitled to this too. Yeah. And then you even saw some grandparents thinking, oh, well, I look after my grandkids. <laughs> you know, so you could see, yeah. you could see it was another way of, which, which is a bit unfortunate because what, what yeah. should have happened is those councillors should have gone, um, we're a council of a size and, and I get remuneration that I don't need this so I won't touch it. Yeah, I yeah. Won't, I won't ask well, look, for well, it. Look, I think it's a good idea. I'm going to benefit from it but I'll let someone else do the advocacy for it. Yeah. And then I'll say, well, hang on, if the majority of my colleagues voted it in yeah. and I wasn't the one leading the charge then maybe the approach might have been seen a little bit yeah. differently. And I'd stood back and said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted here because I'm going to be the first one to benefit from this. Yeah. Uh, so I'll stay out of it uh, and I'll see how my colleagues think or what yeah. my colleagues think of that. But that didn't happen on Thursday uh, and that was even more so the reason why I posted considerable disappointment and you, not, weren't, you not, weren't the only one that posted well, about no, the Well, and not only on the six grand, but on the way that it was done yeah. and the and the outcome where it was that that specific yeah. benefit to us as a group and not to the rest yeah. of the organisation. And then, of course, it hit social media. And the thing I think people need to be careful of now is when these things can hit social media and a lot of people see that it's happening. It's not like the old days where... You found out months afterwards in the newspaper. That's right. Or that's right. That's right. Social media, bang! Everyone's got an opinion on it straight away. Yeah. And so far, I've seen the opinion falls very much in line with what you've been talking about, um, because of pretty much the same issues. There's only been a handful that have thought differently. Most, from what I've seen, have felt that um, it wasn't needed. It was self-serving. Um, and also, it could have been dealt with differently or managed yeah, differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah. Oh, well, thanks very much okay, for your time. Great, Lance. Good and to see you again. A good, good yeah, week. yeah. And you keep you keep um, keep busy with the um, with your with your social media yeah um, so. um, uh, um, points because I think it's important that the city knows. And you know, I think we've got a major long term plan in front of us, and I'd like to see people coming back and telling us 
exactly what we're doing right yeah. and what we're not doing right. Because a lot and, of the long-term plan seems pretty good on the surface.